the RDS is delighted to be partnering on this occasion with the uh, Irish Basking Shark Study Group. Um, you all should be members, really and the uh, Embassy of the United States. And we are thrilled to have Dr. Peter Klimley here this evening, um, an internationally re renowned marine biologist. So I think Susan was right when she uh, said uh, the oceans are such a sensitive ecosystem and with the global change, it's a it's going to have great impact and, and, and influence things. And, and I'm going to just talk about sharks tonight, the conservation of sharks. And the subtitle of my talk is, Man, Beware of Sharks, uh, No, or Sharks, Beware of Man. And um, I've, I, just, I was just thinking, it's, it's 2013, 14. I've been studying sharks for 41 years, a long time. Uh, and I've, I wrote a book, uh, Secret Life of Sharks, and it was written as kind of a manual for young people uh, like Donald to uh, give him my experience and how to be a scientist. And, uh, and, and, and sharks were the vehicle, but you could be a molecular biologist and, and, and find the same excitement to find new ideas and um, more recently, and, and I'm going to, hey, Donna, why don't you uh, take this and just pass it around and so you can take a look at it. It's not just about sharks. It's about studying sharks, getting in the water with them. How do you measure a shark? Diving down, and, and, and uh, you could say it's the size of Don Nelson, or you could try to put a pole next to it, or you could take cameras and, and use cameras to measure it. And that's what I ended up doing. Uh, and there's a, a textbook I've recently written. It's an introduction to sharks. Each chapter, and it's all about how different sharks are than other organisms. And uh, you'll see some of that today when I talk. I start each uh, chapter with an anecdote uh, of, in my life. And then there are uh, highlights, which highlight the whole process of discovery. Because that's why I wanted to be an explorer. And I, I went to the Amazon, and I, I would see a beer can every mile, and that's not exploration. So I went out to the Farallon Islands, just 30 miles from uh, uh, San Francisco, and no, no one knew anything about white sharks and found out all this about white sharks. So I'm going to give uh, Donald, and you can pass that around. And uh, so to start with, and, and, and I have a lab, biotelemetry lab, we tag everything from abalone to giant anteaters to great white sharks that we learn about their biology, physiology, and, and ecology. And if you look at uh, the NOVA um, website, there is Dr. Haverhead. When I was 30 years old, I had a big earring on one ear, and I was long dreadlocks, and uh, my wife always gets annoyed because they haven't updated it to my age right now. So anyway, the image of the shark is very much uh, been created uh, in, in, in the image of the white shark. And, and it all happened in the early 70s. There was a group of cinematographers. Stan Waterman was one of them. And they wanted to find the white shark. Nobody knew much about the white shark. This is before the Jaws book. And so they traveled to South Africa, and they start, and they t towed a whale out there, you know, and waiting for white sharks to come. And there were different sharks there, and they didn't find them. And then they went to South Australia and uh, to Port Lincoln, which is uh, uh, not far from Adelaide. And they drove out to this inconspicuous set of rocks. And the rocks had the name Dangerous Reef. And, uh, and the reason was that there were white sharks there. And they, they wanted to film them, so they, they put blood and chum in the water. And since they wanted to film them, because they had to get the sharks to them, they used the, the chum. And, and here's a photographer right here. And there is the jaw of the shark. Um, 
but you don't realize that there's a bait right here. That's why the shark has opened its mouth. It's just missed the, 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 the bait. And, 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 and this kind of gave rise to the image of the mindless feeding machine, the mindless feeding machine. And I mean, if you look at the jaw of a shark, it's, it's certainly very impressive. I have right here the shark of Sphernum Ocaran, the great hammerhead shark, which I'm going to pass around. And they've got numerous rows of teeth. Uh, so it, uh, and uh, so a friend of mine told me that she went to show and tell, and she told the group that these were the dentures of her father. <laughs> but you can see uh, seven different rows, and, and, and these uh, teeth are constantly being, growing, and they're falling, and out and, and, and if they if a shark gets a prey, very often the teeth are dislodged in the prey. Um, also, the lower jaw is attached to the, uh, the gill arch so that they can open their jaws really large and they can take bites out of things that are larger than this. Uh, and this, so I'm going to pass this around. Um, and you can, but be careful because these teeth are really sharp. You might be attacked by this shark just by holding it in your hand. Um, and we have another jaw right here, which is of the tiger shark. It's got a very unique teeth, and uh, they they are in different directions because once it, uh, it moves this way, it saws uh, a piece of meat out at very very effectively. In fact. The Hawaiians used these teeth in their, their knives. So I'm going to give that to uh, Donal. And, and so, so there's this image, you know, the, the white shark, the jaw. And, and, but you, you've got to realize, as this illustrates here, well, we have Thanksgiving. It's a holiday. And everybody eats turkey and mashed potatoes. I usually give this seminar to my classes at that time. And you can imagine Dr. Hammerhead with Ma Mrs. Hammerhead. They're in a flying saucer. And, and there are these people eating this turkey, eating this mashed potatoes. And, and, and Mrs. Uh, Hammerhead says, Hammerhead, they're jaws, those humans. They're jaws. And so I'm going to try to dispel that. And so I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to show you the image of another shark, which is a more benign shark. <laughs> and so I'm going to talk now a little bit how we studied the white shark. And, and I'm going to try to show you, uh, approach it from a, a cerebral point of view, but I'm going to give you a little bit of the visceral, because I know you need to, to, to actually see it. And so when we study the behavior of sharks, we have to use a, a kind of notation. And I would be up at the Farallon Islands. I would get up at 6 in the morning, and I'd walk up all the way to the top of Lighthouse Hill. And then I'd be looking around, and there'd be a, an attack on a seal. And then we'd get our uh, video scope, so we're pointed at it. And then we'd get the theodolite, and we would document it. And you can go. <clears throat> You can take music, for instance. A lot of you probably uh, may, may read notation of music. And you have a series of uh, bars, and you have notes that indicate the, the sound. And there's also Eshko Washo uh, dance notation that does the same. So this is, in a sense, my form of notation. And I hope you bear with me, because you're going to learn something by understanding this. This each is a. a a scale of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 uh, minutes. And each one of these is 20 seconds. And I take the behavior of the shark and I divide it into uh, states such as swimming at the surface and events such as a splash at the surface. This, uh, so it's swimming at the surface after 20 seconds. And then it's at the surface again here. Uh, now you could take the seal, which is the prey. Who knows the difference between a seal and a sea lion? Where's, where's Susan? Did, uh, come on. You know, it's, 
Okay, so, so here's a picture of a, a seal right there. Uh, they kick with their hind flippers. And, and the uh, scuba, scuba um, flippers today resemble uh, the hind flippers of a seal. Sea lions fly through the water with their four, they have teeth. They walk pretty well on land, they have ears, but they're not like a seal that walks kind of, you know, undulating kind of worm-like kind of walk. And so <clears throat> I'm going to first talk about feeding on a seal, and I'm going to show you a video of feeding on a seal, this right here. Uh, so blood, and then you can take the seal and you can uh, separate its behavior into vents and states. Blood, the appearance of blood being one of, so there's blood, the shark at the surface, now, this is a state, the seal is at the surface, beheaded. 70% of the seals that, are, uh, that they feed on appear at the surface, beheaded. Then uh, you have a splash at the uh, anterior of the shark, a vertical bite, another vertical bite, another vertical bite. He's coming up from under another. Four bites, no seal. Feeding on a sea lion, a little different, uh, because they're a more, and if you look at a lot of white sharks, they have scars all over their face. And a lot of those scars are inflicted by uh, these guys, these sea lions. I don't know if you've ever been in the water with them when they're near their harem. They really are tough customers. They chase you out of the water. And so here's a sea, uh, a sea lion. There's a splash in the water, and then the sea lion uh, uh, appears, a bite taken out of it, and it's swimming at the surface, and then the shark leaps out of the water to grab it and eat it. So, and so that's uh, out of 128 videos, they were all transcribed like that, and then we can uh, make statements on what occurs in, in the future. Um, let's, let me now show you a video of these uh, a predatory attack of the uh, seal at the Farallon Islands. Video TTS. Kawabunga. Uh oh, Kawabunga, start. Bathman here. Okay, some thrashing. Frog just came out and bit. And we got a picture of the red. The white shark, it, it's really a mistake. It was, I, I could, I'm not going to lie on my back. Okay, it's thrashing and it has gone down white with shark the prey. lying on its back. Now there's just blood that, remains. Um, okay, it's up again. Linnaeus saw it, called it a white shark, but really there are cryptic predators. Now look, this seal is at the surface. No blood. That's really odd because seals have the Largest blood blood okay, volume of any and mammal. And gone down with the prey. Because the blood, blood remains. has hemoglobin okay, and it again. attracts oxygen. And so, if you were to want to immobilize a seal, what would you do? You One would carry it down okay, underwater another, until it that stops. The That's the tail fin. It's obviously got the prey in its mouth. But now this this is a video that's taken from the height of. of uh, Lighthouse Hill. Here it comes water floating water up. Water. Now, we now we're seeing a, 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 about a, part of the oh, I'd say two-thirds of the... the Looks like uh, only a very small part of it, maybe even... The seal has been eaten. No, but quite a bit of blood. I, I have a theory about the white shark. It's how does it get close to its prey? Okay. It's dark so on the top the and it's area. light underneath. Not pick up that piece, it's though. easy it's to see in the water and column. Again. And so it approaches it's, it. its prey and they and see it. And then and they don't the and then it goes down to the bottom. It's it's pretty impressive. Yeah. It's Dr. Hyde. Okay. Uh, a it's good white shark. Through. But then it goes down to the bottom. The it yeah, gets under the and it dashes the surface. And it, on the when it's feeding on the prey, it's that either black from above or white from now, below. Thrashy. Thrashy. So it's it's hide. 
not it like it's, it's still got part of the an animal. It's, it's a problem that all predators have, getting close to their prey. If you have a question, I don't mind you asking me even while I'm talking. It's Time, 9, 19, and 35. That's Peter Pyle uh, and, and Scott Anderson who were okay, on this again. island, uh, the Crowlands Island, uh, observing uh, the water. this again, particular Predation. Well, I don't know how to get rid of this thing down here. I wish I did. To the bar down there. Now, what we're going to show next is tell me where it is. When you're at the top of the island, this is what you would see first. You'd see maybe gulls circling yeah, up and up, okay. and then flying out I mean, and I don't coming see down here, but I and see alighting. And, and okay, well, that's yeah, how an uh, attack is first seen. Now I'm going to also illustrate, and hold your seat, a, a vertical attack where the truck is coming up from underneath. Now there's this idea that if you have a, a yellow surfboard, the shark is not going to bite you. Well, you know, uh, anything above that's backlit is a silhouette, is black. So, yellow, this whole idea of a striped surfboard and a yellow surfboard is bunk. It really is. And the idea that they don't bite a second time. Uh, The white shark is perfectly capable of chasing down its prey after here. initially crippling it with a bite. There was a California sea lion right with in part this area of its here. flank removed that's swimming so towards the other main top bay uh, here. He'll appear soon in the lower left corner. You'll see a little bit of splash and you can see its head. This is a great and distance the from the island. So this is a big shark. Seizing it in his jaws. Doesn't look so big yeah, on the screen. The prey is right. It's still large. Okay. Splashing. Came right up from underneath and grabbed it and bit the hell out of it. Um, that was pretty impressive. Yeah, it's uh, if you see a predatory attack, you you emote with it and here's the behavior again in slow motion. It makes a, a it does impress you when you first see it because we were of the similar size and I, I think though the endorphins and so forth knock on so it. Maybe Slap. it's not so painful to the, the but you could be studying um, spiders, uh, and, 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 and I mean, smaller, but predation occurs, and it's part of everyday life. So now, let's see. Unfortunately, the video. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Bunga, and we'll go here. And so I've just shown you these two predatory attacks. So you've seen both the cerebral and the visceral. And when a scientist, each attack, each predation is a little different for both the seal and the sea lion. And what you do as a scientist is you make a model which generalizes what goes on. And if you look at, for the, uh, the seal, you see the shark goes up to the surface. It's carrying the seal down. And uh, the blood is, is, is releasing, coming to the surface. But then it releases the seal after there's no, it's exsanguinated the seal, which is a sense of euphemism for removing us and comes back to eat us, uh, bite it a second time. And very often there are other sharks around that are eavesdropping, and there's this splashing combat that goes on. I'm not going to talk too much about that. The, um, the feed on a seal, sea lion, a little different, comes up, and then less blood. The seal lions do live through the first bite, but alas, they're eaten on the second bite. So why do I show you belabor you with <coughs> this graph, but uh, the reason I do is because they call the white shark the man-eater. Now, that's damn sexist, I think. It's a human-eater, okay? And you can see right here that there's a, a young lady in, in, in here 
uh, even though this is manufactured right here. But if you look at this, uh, this record right here, which is uh, a, a predation, apparent predation on Mark Tizeron, a, a, an abalone diver, it starts like these other ones. There's blood, and then the, the shark, the vertical uh, movement. The shark suddenly uh, carried me, pulling me down five to seven seconds. And uh, Mark says, carried me 50 to 75 feet. Um, but then he hit the shark with his butt uh, three times. But you've got to realize, if you have a shark that's from here to here, and you go, bing, 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 it doesn't help. There's a real reason why the sharks let Mark Tisserand go. And, and that is that we've noticed that white sharks, they're warm-bodied. If you touch a white shark, it's like a human, right, right next to it. It's very warm, and they need a lot of energy. And uh, we see them uh, come up, and they'll strike a pelican, but they won't eat a pelican. They're too lean. They're uh, we also have uh, uh, sea otters that float ashore, and they have these fragments in them. But we've never gotten a sea otter with within the stomach of a white shark. And what's the and so what do they have in common with us? And that is they're lean, they're muscular. Uh, you can take <clears throat> you can take a a seal, okay, and you can take a um, chainsaw. You freeze the seal, and you cut it, you cut it in half, okay? Well, of course, you know, they die naturally. You, you got them. And you look, and you see that the fat is almost as much as the, 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 the muscle inside. And you can flens that off, make a toupee. We put a transmitter in it. We expose it to the shark. The shark will eat that. But if you feed the interior, the muscle, they won't. So they're, they, they are... Um, Optima foragers, just as the Eskimos are. The Eskimos eat primarily fat uh, and in their diet. So the, the, the white shark is not a, a, a man-eater or a human-eater. And furthermore, it's, it's selective. We have, um, and this book that I'm putting around, sending around, as you push that, that shark right there that, that's kind of fuzzy, came up, put its jars around that decoy, and it realized it's a decoy, and it dropped back. And that's the only reason I put something like that uh, on the cover of the bo book. So, but there are some bad guys. Uh, the tiger shark uh, is, is a, a species that is in tropical water. It, um, it does... It has a Catholic uh, diet. It eats birds. It'll eat the birds that the white sharks won't eat. It uh, will eat um, turtles, marine turtles, and occasionally will eat a person. Okay, and and uh, but not that often. In fact, when I was doing shark men, we uh, we pull this uh, uh, white shark onto the deck. And, and we're going to put transmitters on it. And he burped out some booby birds, some blue-legged booby birds, you know. And then the next day, we went off shore, and we were diving down. And I was tagging the hammerhead sharks, and I didn't realize. But I looked there, and there was a whole raft of booby birds at the surface. And boy, I was in the wrong position. I, I, I was very careful when I dived to see a, 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 a tiger shark underneath. Uh, my wife lives. Uh, my, uh, sister lives in uh, Red Red uh, Red Rock, um, New Jersey, on the Neversink, and one of the people that were killed during the in 1918, which caused this mass hysteria um, during the Fourth of July, was killed by a, a bull shark. But you got to be a pretty big bull shark to attack people. But so the number of predations by these big apex predators on humans is very, very few. More what occurs, these injuries that we have due to sharks, 
have to do with uh, a display. And in the late 60s, there was a surgeon who sewed up the uh, leg of a young man, and he put uh, 180 stitches in it, but no flesh was removed. And so he, th he published a paper, uh, Shark Attack, uh, uh, Feeding or Fighting. And it wasn't until a few years later that, uh, that we described, that Don Nelson, a student of Don Nelson described what's called an agonistic display. What is an agonistic display? I don't know if anybody's ever done this or done that. <clears throat> You know, somebody wants to take something from you. And what it is, it's, just, it's a, a signal that's directed at an intruder to avoid aggression. And uh, uh, some of you have had cats. Have you ever seen your cat arch its back, erect its, uh, its fur, bare its claws, hiss, show its teeth? That's a display. Um, and so sh these sharks do the same thing but in a slightly different way, the white shark does. Uh, so you see right here, this is a normally swimming shark right here. The tail is going back and forth, let's say 30 degrees. This is a displaying shark. So the tail's going like this, that, and like that. And you can see it from the front coming at you. And, and you're going to Hawaii, and, and, and you've got your underwater camera and you really want to get a photograph of it. You don't, because if you do, you, you force it into a display and it's going to bite you. And that's how it first was discovered. With, these photographers would all come back with a bite on their arm. Uh, so here, the shark arches its back, uh, its fins, its pectoral fins come down, its, its snout goes up, and it, it rocks one side, it rocks the other side, uh, and you see it makes a circle. Now, if you pursue that shark because you want to get that photograph, the shark is going to make the uh, figure eights tighter and tighter, and then he's going to come around, meow, bop, get you in the back, give a little bite, and then go off and um, feel safe. So another question, and a question probably for Dono, is which of these putting them on the spot. Which is a displaying shark and a non-displaying shark? Which one? Yep. Nobel Prize to that man. But it's important to know that this is a displaying shark. And particularly if you are a diver and you go out in the Eastern Pacific, but all the sharks do it. Um, so should we be worried about being attacked by a shark? And um, these are the number of attacks per 10-year period on people. And I hate the word attack. It, it's, it's almost like terrorism, you know. One, it, one, one attacks one place and everyone's frightened when it's a big world. So here there are, in terms of white sharks, over a period of 10 years, there are uh, 80 of them. So eight per year worldwide. Eight per year. Does it sound like a lot? Uh, these are shark attacks, attacks worldwide. Uh, over a period of 10 years, 50 per year. Does that sound like a lot? Well, look at some of the other hazards that you have to encounter. And I've just come here from New York. I must say your drivers are much better than in New York. I mean, it's crazy in New York. You get die, you know, just get on the street in Manhattan. <laughs> you driving in Manhattan? Are you crazy, man? And then you can see right here. Uh, there are 42,000 fatalities per year to uh, motor accidents, only in the United States. Uh, there are falls, uh, 12,000, uh, drowning, 791, uh, even lightning. Uh, I'm a fly fisherman, and I have a place in the mountains, Sierra, uh, and Sierras, and, and one day I was going to fly fish, and I was going down a hill, and lightning hit the tree next to me. My wife says, you're going to illustrate your lecture, you know, because you've been in the water more than anybody else who's sharks, and you're going to die from a, a lightning strike, you know? And uh, maybe it's the next one that's going to get me, okay? The next one, so it's like one improbability times another improbability. Well, there are other attacks. They're like horse attacks. 
well, people falling off horses. And I'm going to be 220 uh, hornets. Uh, my, uh, uh, my college uh, girl, sweetheart, her father died of a, a, a bee a bite. So at bee sting, that does happen. Dogs are social. But this is right here. It's uh, attacks by sharks worldwide, white sharks. Not, not a lot, but I'll just say, if you go to certain places, you go in the United States, and you go in front of Tamales, and, and you know Nuevo Island, and you have a decoy there, and every time I let that decoy cross, bam, it hit it. But that's in front of a, co a colony of, of, of um, seals, and it's a rocky bottom. And it's interesting that in where I live, there is double point where there's sharks feeding on seals, all the time, and Stinson Beach, uh, and I don't know if anybody's visited San Francisco, but everybody goes to it. It's only two miles away, and it's only been one shark attack in many years. So they are very specific. They hunt where, or, or Southern California. Everybody's in the water. Why aren't the white sharks just eating them all? Well, it's 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 sandy. They 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 wouldn't be able to do it. So they stay where the seals are, and 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 not a big problem. They really aren't. So what are, uh, should sharks beware of man? And they should, because uh, populations, uh, they remain at what we call a carrying capacity, a K, until they decrease by a perturbation, such as a storm or a hurricane. And, and so they are at that steady state. And suddenly, there's this catastrophic event. There are a lot fewer of them. And they recolonize at different rates. We had a terrible fire um, called the Rubicon Fire that decimated the forest along Route 50 that goes to Lake Tahoe, the most beautiful road in California. What happened? Somebody flicked a cigarette, a ciggy poo, and, and, and caused it. And um, it, it, that was 12 years ago. And the first thing, we got some grasses, then we got some uh, shrubs, we, then we got wildflowers, beautiful Sierra wildflowers, and, and then some pines and some firs on the south-facing forks, and now we have the, the king fire, which is going through the same area. But if you were to think of uh, a K species, let's say the consummate K species is the sequoia, the coastal sequoia. It lives 2,000 years. It lives 2,000 years. And you're going to cut it down? Are you crazy? <laughs> People do cut it down, though. So what white sharks have in common with uh, sequoias, giant sequoias, they're K species. They have slow growth, and they don't mature until they're older, and they don't have a lot of young. And uh, so I'm going to uh, show you right here uh, is a vertebrae of the largest white shark ever caught off of California. And it, you can look at it almost like a tree trunk. There are alternating bands of uh, dense calcium phosphate, uh, less dense calcium phosphate. And each one is a year. And it looks like it's, this one is 14 years old. Uh, and if you uh, look here, this is young of the year right here. The, this is when it was born right here. Year one, two, you can see how they, they used to, you stain these with silver nitrate and they stand out. And here you have a graph. This is the length of the shark. This is one meter long, uh, two meters long, three meters long, four meters long. This is the number of bands. And so you can see that a shark 500 centimeters, okay, that's this, go across is uh, 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 15 feet, 6 inches, uh, it gets to that size in 15 years. Now, the interesting thing is, at, at the Farallon Islands, I observed uh, two sharks. They were th uh, 360 centimeters long in 1989, and, and they're still observing them. And so we have observations of sharks that are, are over 20 years old that doesn't seem to jive with us. So the same person that did this study cut them this way and looked at, and there are a lot of additional lines right at the edge. So the, they may be 
get much older than that. And I'm going to throw it out. Maybe you can look at it. I don't want it because I don't want to break it. It's a priceless thing. But take a look at that. Um, trying to get you involved in and sex. White, uh, I was the one who first described sex in sharks. It's pretty amazing stuff. And they have their pectoral, uh, pelvic fin, it curls, and it becomes what's called a clasper. And I'm the kind of guy that people, when they're walking on the beach and they see a piece of wood that looks like a shark, they bring it to me, they give it to me. Okay, so I'm going to use this to illustrate a clasper. But so, <laughs> I have a lots of, in my office, these flying sharks, and it's like I get all this shark paraphernalia sent to me. But anyway, it has what's called a ripidium. It's like an umbrella because it opens up. And then it has, and this one shows it, uh, a, uh, a spur, and they have a claw. And, and so when it, it, they don't have arms to hug each other, so this is inserted. And, it, uh, and then they have a, a siphon sac, which they fill with water and go, Moo! and that then uh, forces the, the, the uh, uh, spermatozoa into the female. And, uh, and, and, they, and, and sharks, in a sense, show puberty, but it's different than humans. In humans, the girls show puberty. In, in the sharks, the males show puberty. And that is, this is the length of the shark. And you can see this is the length of the clasper. So this is like, oh, this, this is a large change in, in, in size. This is, uh, these are millimeters. So that's 10 uh, or centimeters. That's 10. So that's that. And then 20 is this and, and so forth. You see that they slowly grow. And then suddenly, they grow really rapidly over a certain uh, size range. Uh, <coughs> And, and then they don't grow anymore. So they become sexually mature at a length of 350 or so meters because these are hard claspers and, and they uh, contain spermatozoa. So they don't get uh, reproductively mature until when they're nine, nine years old. So, and finally, they don't have a lot of young. And isn't that terrible that people have killed those, the, the beautiful uh, female shark right here? And, and these are the young. Uh, it, it, is, it is a difficult life being in the uterus of a shark, particularly one of these, because the little ones, uh, as they develop, they eat the eggs. They're ophophagous. And then when they finish off the eggs, they start eating each other. And, they, and so, uh, they end up with this number, and there's a lot of tooth, teeth in, in, in the uterus. There's one shark, the sand tiger. It has, it ends up with only one, one young. And these young take up a huge uh, amount of space in the uh, body of the shark. And for that reason, sharks have a very small stomach, and they have a intestine that usually is scrolled or, or uh, it's uh, uh, sometimes they're spiraled. Uh, and so they don't eat so fast, so they don't grow so fast. And so that has a consequence. And so it, uh, in, in terms of competing with other species, you find it, the white shark, 9 to 12 years of maturity, 15 years longevity, 2 to 10 pups, a biennial uh, pupping, a 12-month. But how can you compete with Atlantic cod, which is two to four years to maturity, and they have two to 11 million eggs? The problem is uh, the sharks were the king and queen of the ocean until we came along. And they would, they would give birth to a, a shark, a baby, that's almost like an adult. And there was no chance or risk of that little baby being killed. But then we set out our nets, and West Pras gets uh, 10 juveniles and, and uh, uh, another eight uh, two-year-olds in one set of a net. And this is 
been the story over and over again. And, and I used to go to the Gulf of California. I'd see these sharks. And you are not as many as I would see in the, uh, this auditorium of sharks. I would see, uh, I, I estimated 560 of them, all in this small area, about half the size of this room. And then I went back in 2000, and there were only three of them kind of swimming alone, and they looked like they were refugees of, uh, of the fishing. And so what had happened is that uh, the fishing for sharks in Florida started to be popular, and then even though the number of uh, pounds uh, caught annually decreased, that's what that curve is showing you, it's decreasing, um, they were fishing more and more and more until they have to regulate that fishing, or uh, fish and chips, there's a big demand for fish and chips, so we did a lot of fishing for f fish and chips, and, 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 and those that population has declined. So what we do in the States, and I don't know what you, you may, you want to protect your sharks. I think the basking sharks are a resource. They're ecotourism. They're precious. <laughs> they don't kill them. Uh, but, so we have now species uh, specific recording. We protect white sharks. They do say attack us, but we protect them. You know, we, 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 we're very, uh, Whale sharks, basking sharks, tiger sharks, and big eye, we, we protect them uh, and we uh, prohibit removing fins from sharks. That's a big problem, finning sharks. Kicking a shark, you just cut its fin and you throw it back into the water to let it die. What an inhumane thing to do and what a wasteful thing to do. And, and I've, written, I've written this article that Dr. Hammerhead, he he becomes a shark. I, I become a shark, and then I organize all the dolphins and the whales, and we stop those fishermen from fishing for our, our fins. And, and maybe someday that, that'll be my next book. Uh, so uh, what has done is based on those rapid growth, early maturity, higher fecundity, uh, you can determine how vulnerable species are to fishing. And uh, and they have these what are called rebound potentials. The big ones right here mean they can rebound. Gray smoothhound, brown smoothhound, these are caught off California in the Pacific. The bonnethead shark, another type. They get mature in one year and have a lot of young. But, <clears throat> Emmett, don't know, you see where the basking shark is there. And that looked too good right there. You were right at the, lo the lowest rebound. And so they start catching basking sharks, which they have done before. There's been a fisheries for them. Uh, they, the fishery collapses very quickly. So what can you do to, uh, to get something from sharks? And, 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 uh, and so one of the things is, is that uh, there's ecotourism, which is something that I've, I've rarely met a, a, a fisherman that wasn't struggling, but ecotourists do do quite well. And, and uh, I think that uh, one of the solutions is having marine reserves. And we've been studying species in the Eastern Pacific that go between these islands. And I think of the ocean as a sopa de albondigas. A, a meatball soup. There are these hot spots um, where these sharks are really abundant, and you can protect them in those hot spots, and and rather than trying to protect them throughout the ocean. And so we dive down with these tags, and we put them on uh, hammerhead sharks or whale sharks. Difficult. You've got to get a little propeller. They go so they, they look like they're swimming really slowly, but they go really fast. And so we have a little propeller on the, the uh, scuba tank, and then we can get our uh, tags on. We have these listening stations that I'm hoping that we may use here in some studies that will tell you whether they're, they're at a, a location. Here, this is the Galapagos Islands, uh, and there, if you want to see sharks, you want to see them at these locations. They are uh, volcanic, and it so happens that they have magnetic fields associated with them. When the, 
there's an eruption, you have little magnets that get uh, enshrined in the lava, and then the Earth field rotates, and you, now you have the Manti parallel. And so the, we find these sharks around these uh, volcanic uh, uh, cones, and, and they move along these magnetic ridges and valleys. As in Dublin, you have those roads leading out away from, and they go out, and then they feed, and then they come back. So, and, and we find that they swim with the directionality that you drive your car. Um, and so, again, here shows, uh, right here, these are hammerhead sharks. There's big barbings. There are lots of hammerhead sharks there. And Shark Point, lots of hammerheads. But this area right here, I was with my graduate students. And, um, and we saw this school of yellowfin tuna, lot, lots of yellowfin tuna. And then we saw yellowtail tuna, all these yellow. And then there were all these Galapagos sharks, little Galapagos sharks that are swimming around us. Man, they're going to bite us. And then there are the hammerhead sharks, okay, there are lots of hammerheads. And then suddenly we heard, click, 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 and the dolphins appeared. The, they're the punks, there were a hundred of them. And they were, everything was hiding from them. And I, and I rose to the surface and I went, wow. And he, he also came to the surface, wow. This was a hot spot. This was a place that there was more life in that one little place. And that's uh, a, where we want to uh, protect uh, the animal. And again, this is where we're, you can see that we're tracking hammer, a, hammerhead, a Galapagos shark that's there. It's spending a lot of time there. Same with the, the, the hammerhead shark. They stay in these certain places. And this shows this shark. We, followed this shark away from a seamount, 20 kilometers, okay, that's 10 miles. What's 10 miles from here? I, I don't know, you, is there a highway going 10 miles? And if, if you look here, the shark came back along the same track. These are 10 headings that we measured. They are almost identically in the same direction. They, it's, and the shark was 200 meters from the surface, and it was 800 meters from the bottom, so couldn't see anything. And here we are, we're, we're five, uh, there's an island five miles from shore, we're 10 miles from that island. It's a black night, we're out in the middle of nowhere, we're following this thing, and, and we're a little scared because and then we have a research vessel halfway between us and the seamount, and the damn thing turns around and starts going by and says, it's going to the boat, and it goes right back to that, sea. how do they do it? And I think it is, that they orient to these magnetic fields and that we have to create uh, these shark parks based on that. Uh, tiger sharks also stay very close to uh, the islands. And so many of these species do. And so uh, there's this rationale now for uh, shark parks and Donal and, and Emmett have been talking about making uh, a, a shark park here in, in Ireland. I think it's a great idea, and um, and it, but you need to define that, and I think you need to do telemetry studies to f find out their movements, so you can find out just how large you want that shark park to be, and as I am doing with uh, Darwin Island and 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 Wolf Island and. And, and, and we want to make Canada, look at these places. I mean, would you want to go to these places? Well, if you're a diver and get in the water, all the places I go are rocks. This, this one right here, it's like the Empire State Building. It rises up from great depths. It appeared in 1927. There was nothing there, and suddenly there was this eruption. And this, this, this rock up, there are eight species of sharks swimming around that island. Each, One's different, and it, it, it behaves in a different way. Um, but Pelo Island off of Columbia, a wonderful place to, uh, st uh, where sharks are very common. People from all over the world go there. Uh, uh, this is Cocos Island, Island of the Sharks. There have been a number of films done that, Roca Partida and Las Animas. So with that, I just would uh, finish uh, saying thank you for listening, and, uh, and I would appreciate any questions but only easy one. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the RDS and I think everybody in this hall, I'd like to say a very big thank you to Peter, Dr. Hammerhead, for an enthralling talk. And I could listen to that for many, many, many hours longer, but we haven't got that time. But thank you, Peter, for coming here and for delivering such an interesting talk. been a long, long time. How are you doing? How is your son? How are his children? I bet they're just like me. You must be tired, tired, tired of hearing prayers like mine. No need to answer. But nobody likes to know when they play. All they ever be. But there's this this girl, this girl, this girl, this girl And I'd be the happiest backslider in the world If you would tell her it's your will for us to be together Father, 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 will you see me try and try to make a love I'd sell my soul to hear the one thing She thinks she'll never say But now it's Sunday, Sunday, Sunday And a pretty voice is rising up to ask you Like I won't stand, like I'm about to If you could show her the way Cause this is girl, this girl, this girl, this girl, this girl and I'd be the happiest backslider in the world If you would tell her it's your will for us to be together I would never bother you from P.